This brief clip is just to show you how an oil-fired burner works and some basic tests on it. What we have here is a 115 volt burner system off of a pressure washer. It's set up for demonstration purposes. Normally, this cone would be inside of the fire chamber in your pressure washer, and this plate would be bolted to the back or burner head of your pressure washer. We have a fuel pump, fuel solenoid, burner transformer, and on this side, a combustion blower motor, or blower motor for short. What we're gonna demonstrate is how it works and how to test it. To replace things like your trigger gun and burner switch, I have a remote switch here that will apply power and start things to operate. Initially, when I turn it on, you'll hear the blower motor turning. The blower motor turns a squirrel cage fan which provides combustion air for your burner. To have a fire, you need air, you need fuel, and you need spark. Right now we have the air, we have the fuel, and when I turn this button, or we have the spark, and when I turn this switch, we will have fuel. Note, the fire starts immediately. When you release your trigger, the fire goes off. Squeeze your trigger, comes on. Release, it goes off. Now should you squeeze your trigger and the fire doesn't come on, the basic test you would perform is to determine which one of the three things you need that isn't there. Whether it's air, whether it's fuel, or whether it's spark. You won't be able to see this because it'll be inside the pressure washer. So what you'll have to do first is determine if you're getting fuel. You'll do that First of all, by checking your fuel tank, burner fuel tank, to be certain that you have fuel in that. Then you'll turn your burner on and look at the bowl on your fuel filter. This is a Raycor water trapping fuel filter. You can see it bubbling inside of there. You know it's moving fuel. Another test for that would be to go to the bleeder valve located right here in the lower right hand corner of, of your fuel pump and break it loose. When you do that, fuel will spew out. But if you have this clear type filter, you don't even have to do that because you can see it bubbling down here. If you have fuel there, the next thing you would do to find out if you're getting fuel into the burner, is you would unscrew this nut here on this fuel transfer line. Then you would squeeze your trigger again, and if fuel comes out, you know you have fuel. If you have no fuel, then you have to troubleshoot farther back up the line. Now, if you find that you have fuel and you suspect that perhaps you don't have spark, then you have to take a look at your burner transformer. You do so by taking the latch screw loose. Release the retainer clip and open the transformer. Now this next test I'm gonna make is a test of the burner transformer. 
This transformer secondary voltage is 10,000 volts. So you have to be very careful when you're doing this. <coughs> very few voltmeters will test voltage that high. So we use the old mechanics shortcut by shorting between these two terminals with power applied to the unit. Note that I'm using a well-insulated screwdriver, not a wooden handle one. This one has a rubber handle. Plastic handle will do, but note that the handle is in good condition. Don't use old tools. Also note the way I grasp it, my fingers or no part of my body is touching the metal shaft of the screwdriver. If you touch that, You'll ground yourself and you'll take 10,000 volts in the end of that finger. You turn on your burner. And then coming across the two terminals, note how the spark jumps up and follows up around 3 eighths of an inch. We know we have a good transformer. Now this is a good burner. We don't have any problems, so we will not find something not working on it. When you're through, you close it, replace the retainer clip, and tighten the screw. With that done, you're ready to operate again. Now, if you should note that your fan is not turning, and you can tell by hearing it, or by no fuel movement, you'll check your blower motor to see why it's not turning. If you will note on the end of it, there's a red button here. That's an overload. If for some reason you put an overload on this motor, and the kind of things that do that are low voltage, if you're running a generator operated type machine and your generator belts are loose or slipping, you'll have low voltage. It'll cause low voltage, causes the motor to run too many amps, and this button kicks out. Another thing that can cause it is your fuel pump. On this unit, we have a very fine fuel filter, but on one that perhaps does not, if water gets into your fuel pump, it'll start to rust up and lock down. When that happens, again, it overamps the motor and your red button pops out. If you find this red button popping out, you simply reset it and look for the cause. Once you determine what the cause is, you fix that and go on back to washing. That's how simple a burner system can be. If you should have any questions, contact your local service center or call us at 1-800-433 2113. Thank you.